How are you feeling today? Do you feel any different from when we spoke yesterday afternoon? No, I feel much better. Have you had any suicidal thoughts since we last spoke? No, not at all. Do you feel like you will try to hurt yourself when you leave this hospital? No. I, I can't even believe I tried to hurt myself the first time, <laughs> to be honest. Now, I know in speaking with Dr. Cummins, I'm fully aware that you are dealing with a different set of circumstances beyond why I'm here talking to you today. That seems to be the case. I guess I was just a little ahead of the curve of God's good deeds. This is not going to be an easy time, and pessimism is completely understandable. Based on your past non-history of psychotic episodes, I am ready to sign off on your discharge. I just wish it was under better circumstances. talk we can talk in the morning i don't even know what you're trying to say and if you want to change change for the better i don't even know just who you are if you're gonna lie you better lie a little better i can still see who you are inside and if you want to change change for the better Can you just talk to him? These symptoms you've been experiencing are uh, neurological side effects. And you've probably been experiencing some discomfort for years now in order to get to this point. I mean, what are you trying to say? Just, just say it. The prognosis for your recovery is unlikely. In fact, the best I could possibly hope for is three, maybe six months.
Now, you can't change your past, but you can determine your destiny by deciding for Christ. But Christ can change your past. He died on the cross so that all the sins you've ever committed, all the things you've ever done wrong, are forgiven. What do you have to do? You have to repent of your sins. That means to be willing to change your way of life. You may have no power to do some breakfast. You may not have power to give up some of those habits you know are wrong. You may not have power to fall in love with your wife again. You may not have power. Feeling okay, buddy? You gotta eat a big breakfast if you wanna be big and strong like your father. I'm not really hungry. The game six is on tonight. I'll be on the mound against the rocket. Be a tough one. Him and sex. Hmm. Are you all right, Chris? Sorry, I, I was distracted. Um, I wasn't expecting. No worries. My name is Natalie. I've been sent by the service. Are you just getting in? Yeah, just getting in. It's strange being back in this place. There's a lot of interesting memories in this house. I'm sure. Well, let me let you get settled and I can check in again in a few minutes. Well, I'm not exactly sure how this is supposed to work. Uh, it's my first time. I'll let you get settled. Hey. So where is he? Isaac is at my mother's. And why is that? Chris, do I really need to explain? When I called you last night, you were slurring so badly I could barely understand you. Come on, this is just... You know, it's not just last night. Every time I come here, it looks worse than the weekend before. And so do you. I'm worried. I just don't think this is the best environment for him. So, you're seriously not going to let me see my son? I don't know, just not now. I think you need help, Chris. I didn't know who to reach out to, so I turned to your father and was going You call to... my father? Are you fucking serious? <laughs> see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. I need to go. You can't keep him from me. I'll call you. I'm sorry. Are these yours? They were on the counter. Yeah, you just leave them on the table. Is this a good time to go over your medication? <sighs> sure. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> this is penicillin. It's going to relieve some of the high copper levels in your blood. It's best that you take it about an hour before your meals. We're always going to take this on an empty stomach. Sounds like fun. The penicillamine is going to have some side effects, especially with the high doses that you'll be taking. You're going to experience some abdominal pain, loss of appetite, and nausea. There's also a risk of neurological symptoms. Well, what does that mean? It could be just a temporary loss of taste or smell. Or you could also experience illusions or hallucinations. Here are your pain meds. Your kidneys will be taxed a bit with the penicillin, so this will help with that. I believe you already know the side effects of the oxy. The penicillin is going to make your muscles weak. And your doctor tells me that the myopathy has already started. And the 
action is going to cause dragging from time to time. That's why you have to make sure to take it easy on those questions. It will help you to get around more easily. Thank you Do you have any questions? No. It just let me be alone. Sure. Let me know if you need anything. Son, here I am leaving this letter for you. I should be saying all of this to your face right now, but I wouldn't even know where to start. The father should offer some hint of hope, shouldn't he? I'm trying. I really am. But it's hard to paint a picture of a world I don't really believe in at this moment in time. Especially now given the circumstances. The confronting of genuine tragedy is a highly cathartic experience psychically. Now history reminds us that tragedy is inseparably connected to human dignity, presenting us with moments of great insight. Oh, hi there. Uh, you can continue quoting Dostoevsky if you like. We didn't miss much. We just started. I'm sure someone explained to you how this process works. The most important thing I like to remind everybody is just try to be as honest as possible. You only get out of these sessions what you put in. Now we like to have our new members introduce themselves. How about it, Chris? <laughs> well, there's not much to say. Um... I'm Chris, and I wasn't really looking forward to coming here, to be honest. It's okay. You don't have to say anything on your first day. You know, hopefully, uh, some stories from others will help. That's all we can ask for here. Some peace of mind. And we were greeting Harold when we started. Harold, please finish. So my name is Harold. And I have a tumor. My colon. Third time got me. But I'm not looking at it as a death sentence. I've got some precious time left with family. And I'm going to live my life until God decides he wants me up with him. you got to be kidding me. Chris, was there something that you wanted to add? No. Nope. All good. Chris, there's no graduation from this. I'm not going to ask you to leave. Harold? We've all got a rotten deal. Some more than others. Most of us aren't going to be around much longer. And I know I don't want to have any regrets before I go. I think you all need to ask yourselves one question. Are you right with God? Praise Jesus. What's that in my spaghetti? You've had it before. It's your grandmother's recipe. Are you serious? Liz, we talked about this. You eat what your mother puts on your plate. But I don't like it. It looks disgusting. You eat it now or it'll be waiting for you in the morning at breakfast. Chris, don't think I forgot about the computer. You're still gonna get one. I just need you to be patient a little while longer, okay? Thanks, Dad. Chris, I need you to try on a new pair of khakis to wear to church on Sunday. I really don't want to go to church. Chris, we go to church together as a family on Sundays. 
That's all there is to it. It's so boring. Chris, we go to church on Sundays together as a family. Not another word. Chris, stop, please. I don't believe in the invisible man in the sky. Chris, you're okay. Come on, let's finish dinner. Chris, get back here! Let him go. I'll learn. This is my dinner table. My house. My rules. And God will be a part of it. Hey Chris, it's me. You remember your sister, right? Just wanted to call and say hi. Tell you that we love you and miss you. I miss you. It's been a while, Chris. Call me back. I'm starting to get worried. Hey man, just checking in. Haven't heard back from you in a while. I'm wondering if you was up. I know you ain't ignoring my ass. Call me back, brother. Did you hear about Danny Smith? No, what happened to him? He OD'd on fucking heroin. I mean, you remember how clean cut that kid used to be? His mom found him in his bed. I, mean, I can't believe that dude still lived at home. It's always the ones you don't expect, man. Hey, man, you still with me? <laughs> What's your son doing? He doesn't know all the details, but he'll be fine. It's something, you know, to have that connection appear out of nowhere. One day he's not there, and then the next is all you care about. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, how does that happen? God, I miss him. But you haven't seen him? She says I'm not fit to be a father. I wasn't providing a safe environment. <laughs> I can't handle being a weekend dad. She's out of her mind. <laughs> Your Richard got hitched to Brenda? Two kids? And Disappeared. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna track that statement. We're Facebook friends. Now I get to see him post pictures of his dog eating its own shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he told me he was getting married. He didn't tell me he was to, to Brenda. You mean, Big Brenda. Yeah. <laughs> what, what the fuck happened to everybody, uh, right? I, I don't know. I mean, everybody's either married and miserable or <laughs> fucking dead. Not sure which is worse. Dad, have you ever been married before? No, no, just me and mom. Why is your mom here with us? Well, this is uh, my uncle Jimmy, your great uncle. Uh, your mom never actually met him. But shouldn't she be here? Then why do you guys fight so much? I don't understand. Not everyone agrees all the time. It's not something that you have to worry about. Okay? Okay, Dad. 
Never been to one of these before. Do they expect you to cry at the end? Only if you feel sad. I don't know how I'm feeling. Just be yourself. I know you'd be fine. Dude, I gotta use your pisser. You need anything? Well, a ticket to heaven. <laughs> I don't think that's up to me, bro. We're the shop. To your hand. Yeah, I had a little disagreement with the house. What was that way? Let me take a look. I hope it's not hurting you very much. Yeah, a little. But I'm pretty good with pain. Oh, I see. Well, good news is I don't think anything is broken. I doubt I can say the same for the house. Yeah, I, I got a few good shots in. Why do you do it? Do what, Chris? Take care of people. It's a hard question to answer. I don't know. Guess I learned at the young age that you can't rely on others to take care of you. You have to fend for yourself. It's a lot of chaos beyond those walls. What do you say? <laughs> don't mind me. I just want to help. I didn't have a lot of it myself. But look, I survived. And I'm here now. No more punching houses, okay? Yeah, good advice. <laughs> this is so hard. They're so much more resilient than I could ever be. I'm brave. I'm so proud of how brave they've been. We cried a little bit more, and then we laughed. And I told them how much I love them, that I will always be there for them, even if in spirit. God. I told them that I would be their angel in heaven, and that I'd be watching over them and protecting them always. I think we found some peace of mind. So I'm not holding on anymore. I'm not kicking and I'm not screaming. Oh God, I love them so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. It feels good just to talk about it. Thank you, Carol. I'm sure this wasn't easy for you, and we're all proud of you. How about you, Chris? You're not exactly the new guy anymore. What's on your mind? Okay, well, uh, 
How much time do you got? We're not going anywhere. Okay. You. Kudos. You did it. You told your kids you're gonna die. The tough part's over. It's all downhill from here. Easy, Chris. We're not here to judge or criticize. Uh, you're right. Sorry. What was I thinking? That must have been so rough on you. Clearing your conscience like that? You must feel relieved. I don't be surprised if you woke up tomorrow cured of whatever it is you have. Fourth stage. Lung cancer. I mean, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that information, huh? I, I mean, do, do, do I get up and give you a hug? Or do I try and tell you the story of my own fucked up life to make you feel better about yours? I mean, what the fuck are we all doing here? I'm gonna die. You're all going to die. I get that you're looking for ways to use the pain. I mean, I, I get that. But just, just think for a moment how ridiculous that notion is. I'm not gonna look for ways to ease the pain anymore. I'm, I'm gonna embrace it. I'm gonna stare it right in the fucking eyes. I'm sorry, but that's the only thing that makes any sense to me. I don't belong here. Chris, do you need some help? Don't you get it? I don't want your help. I'm sorry your meeting didn't help you today. I have a surprise for you. I'm not the biggest fan of surprises. <laughs> I'm sure you're not, Chris. But this is a small one, and there is something that I think you need. You could use some time out without anywhere to go. It can do some good and make you feel a little better this morning. I'm not sure it's really realistic right now. You know why? What's the point? Two reasons. One, you won't be so grumpy tonight when I'm working. And two, I want to show you something. And it's not negotiable. Got it? Chris, snap out of it. For me. Minsk. What? Minsk, it's where I grew up in Belarus. We had a dacha. A cabin a couple of hours away from the city on Lake Naraj. That was my place. But I went to get away from everything. You're not the only one who ever tried to run away, Chris. It's not Minsk, but it will do for now. Do you know that most of these buildings were built in the 1820s? Almost this entire village was built over 200 years ago. And unlike disposable things we built today, these ones still have purpose. You know a lot about this place for someone who's never been. Uh, but how do you know I've never been here before? My son, he likes taking trips to boring places. Well, places that the average kid would call boring. He's definitely not average. Tell me about your son. He's, uh... 
He's smart. He's really, really smart. And his teacher says that, that he's off the charts. It's incredible. I, I always worried, you know. I mean, what, what did I do to deserve to have a kid who sees the world the way that he does? Because he gets that things aren't perfect. But he fucking understands. He can see the beauty in all things. Even something that doesn't serve the time of day. That's beautiful. I've been holding grudges for 20 years. I don't think he even knows what a grudge is. You're a good father. Am I? Yes. You're something else, you know that? I'm glad that you're smiling right now, Chris. Listen, um... I'm sorry if I'm... difficult. It's just a lot to take in, you know? I just always thought I knew how I'd end up. Old and miserable, like my parents. But that's all changed now. Old? No. But you're a bit miserable, Chris. <sighs> yeah, well... What do I have to be mad about? With you here right now. <laughs> Isaac. You scared me. <laughs> well, why don't you take a seat, bud? Tell me what's going on. Who's Natalie? Ah, she just helps me around the house. Is she your girlfriend? <laughs> No, no. Uh, she just helped me fix a few things. So is everything okay with you? Are you sick or something? I'm a little sick, but I'll be okay. Now why don't you tell me what you're doing here? And please tell me your mother knows about it. She doesn't know I came. Isaac. It's not my fault. Isaac, you can't just leave without telling your mother. She's gonna kill me. I said it's not my fault. She told me to come. Natalie did. Mom won't tell me why I can't visit you on the weekends anymore. Did I do something? It's on me. I made a lot of mistakes that I haven't owned up to yet. It's complicated. Can't you just tell me what's going on? When I was a kid, I, um, I made a pact with your aunt. We promised each other we would never grow up to be like our parents. Your grandparents, they, um, they stayed together. And they're, they're still together, but I can't think of one moment when it seemed like they even wanted to be in the same room together. Liz made sure of it and moved away right after college. Sounds to me like she ran away. I'm not sure there's much of a choice there. But you and Mom aren't like that. I know you love each other. Well, I'm glad you see it that way. 
The last thing I want to do is place any kind of burden on you. You don't deserve that. It's a little too late for that, Dad. Just don't grow up to hate your old man. You'll be okay, right? I come here for the donuts. And the coffee's not half bad. They used to burn to shit, but we complained enough. Black, no sugar. Don't want anything to get in the way of that caffeine rush to my brain. Are you a little young for coffee? Maybe. Not too young to die, though. I'm sorry, does that make you feel uncomfortable? Why are you such a jerk off? Oh, I've never been called that one before. Am I a jerk off? <laughs> yeah, you are. What? <laughs> Nothing. You just remind me of someone. So what'd you do to get in here? I'm still trying to figure that one out. I always knew. I just felt like something was off. But my parents wouldn't tell me for the longest time. I get it already. Trips to the emergency room in the middle of the night. Endless blood tests and doctor's visits. I don't know why they were so scared to tell me. I mean, I get why, but at some point, don't I deserve some honesty? Do they think I was stupid? I like coming here. It's probably the only place I could say that about. I'm telling you, the donuts are really good. All right. You said the coffee's decent. I have always valued accountability. It was something that I never saw in my family's DNA. Our problems were, were always someone else's. Government, friends, alcohol, drugs. No one ever seemed to look in the mirror. I suppose I fall in their footsteps. I've tried too hard to break from this mold. Maybe it's just a part of me. And this, this is just the beginning of the end. Unfortunately, it wasn't my time to go just yet. My body rejected them. My stomach got pumped in the ER. Some internal bleeding. But it's always been something worse. Something I thought I was never equipped to handle. I wasn't trying to end it all in that moment. I mean, I know, don't get me wrong, it, sometimes I, I think about it. An easy solution. I just wish I didn't care so much. Experience is not what happens to you, it's what you do with what happens to you. At the end of the day, in this timeless moment, whether our problems are passed on or inflicted upon us by our environment, all we can do is make sure that we finish things on our own terms. Until next time. You're not, not the, the only, only one who ever tries to run away, Chris. Most, Most of us aren't going to be around, around much longer. longer. And I know, I, know I, don't I don't want to have, have any regrets, regrets before, before I go. I go. Everybody's, Everybody's either, either married, married and, and miserable, miserable or, or <laughs> fucking dead. dead.
Can you just tell me what's going on? You're a good, good father. All we can do is make sure that we finish things on our own terms. It'll be okay, right? Welcome back to BTS News Nightly. I'm Adora Hollis, and your existence is a thoughtless accident. In local news, James Sheraton of Cedarville pled guilty Tuesday to manslaughter and heroin possession in the January 16th drug-induced death of Daniel Smith of Red Bank, according to Monmouth County Prosecutor Alex Kinnear. Mr. Smith was found non-responsive in the backyard of his mother's home near the south end of Wilson Boulevard. Sheraton is scheduled to be sentenced in August, and prosecutors plan to ask for the eight-year prison term for the manslaughter charge. In Middle East news, Cato Simpson and Sherry West were reportedly engaged while vacationing in U.S. Baghdad this past weekend. Cato offered Miss West a four-carat Kaiser Fleischer ring to seal the deal. The couple was available for comment but were unable to give one due to an onset of pseudosclerosis. In health news, a clinical trial in recently divorced cirrhosis patients show that probiotics could help prevent the deterioration of brain function, a serious complication of late stage liver disease. According to a new study in ATP 7B quarterly, probiotics are effective in preventing confusion altered levels of consciousness and coma in patients suffering from liver failure. Minimizing this deterioration of brain function, a serious complication of diseases related to liver malfunction, has scientists believing that a cure is certainly on the horizon. But some scholars are not so optimistic, citing that the overall prognosis of patients is poor, with a 58% mortality rate in one year, and 77% over three years. Research into safer and more effective treatments is underway. Now, here's weather. New photos show damage and destruction in Brick, New Jersey's Barrier Island neighborhoods one week after the hurricane ravaged the area. Residents have still not been allowed to return, even for a short period as some of the other areas, to retrieve their belongings and important documents. There was no immediate word when re-entry would be permitted for residents. The hurricane, referred to as Superstorm Wilson in the U.S., has transformed this island into something resembling a war zone. I'm Adora Hollis for BTS News Nightly. Sleep well and embrace the threat of imminent non-being. Hi, Chris. Uh, it's Dr. Cummings. Chris, you're going to be fine. Okay, just, just relax. I uh, heard about your episode. And I want you to know that we are going to do everything in our power to make uh, you as comfortable as possible. I have to be honest. I really don't know how long this is going to take. There are good days, and, uh, and there's days like today. So I'm going to set up an appointment for you with Dr. Verdon. Uh, do you remember him from the hospital no, before you uh, checked out? Do you feel like you will try to hurt yourself when you leave this hospital? I can't even believe I tried to hurt myself the first time, to be honest. But I realize that now that I've had a brief moment of insanity. 
brought on by a culmination of issues, which I clearly was not able to face. Good. Good. Have you had any feelings of aggression or impulsiveness since yesterday? Come closer. What is it, Chris? I lied. Uh, lied? A lot of lied about what? Everything. This brief moment of insanity it hasn't been so brief. It's been around for a while now and it can't be helped by your medicine. Your psychiatrist. Chris, everything will be okay. Right, you're just a bit delusional right now. What do you mean it's gonna be okay? We both know that's not true. No. No, it's not. No, I, I, I see very clearly. And I'm trying my hardest to break this fucking cycle. It destroys everything. Get some sleep, Chris. You're... You're just exhausted. Yeah. Well... At least you got one thing right today. Well, he's uh, just a little sedated, and uh, we had an episode last night. That's why I called you in, as you were listed as the decision maker's priority and capacity. Uh, sir, sir, are you, are you with me? Now, we're not there yet, but as Chris's pain increases, we have an option to over-medicate. Uh, some call it uh, snowing the patient. I, I don't understand. What, what does that mean? Well, we would increase uh, Chris's morphine uh, to the point where he would feel no pain whatsoever. Um, there would be complications and his respiratory system would be compromised. Are you saying this would kill him? I, I don't want to phrase it that way, but uh, there is a school of thought that says that snowing a patient is cruel and uh, pain is to be expected. What I'm trying to say is that we at least have an option to uh, allow Chris to pass in comfort. Oh God, I'm so tired. I just, I can't do this anymore. I mean, what are, what are we supposed to do? You're saying th this is inevitable. So, that's it. We just say goodbye. Uh, can I speak with you for a second? Sure. I saw the doctor leave, but he didn't give me any details. Well, we're, we're coming towards the end. And I think I'm going to have Chris's son come visit. <laughs> There's a woman coming to bar to talk about some, something very important. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Excuse me. Shouldn't excuse me. Hey, Chris. How your bets are scoring tonight? Pretty good. Other than feeling like I'm sitting on a campfire 
and the whole uh, knives along my back thing. What time do you have? It is late. But I need to finish up and check your levels before I leave. And I gave you some Demerol in your IV to douse your campfire ass. You are the best. <laughs> you really are. And this is coming from someone who finds most humans to be intolerable. <laughs> And it's not the, it's not the drugs talking. No, I, I usually need a couple of glasses of whiskey in me before I give an honest compliment. You know, that the word compliment comes from the Latin completer. That means to complete. I am a miserable fuck, and your kindness completes me. Isn't that right, honey? Ugh. That doesn't sound right. Whatever, no one talks in person anymore anyways. I'll just, I'll just text you a better compliment later. Okay, Chris, you do that. You should be able to sleep soon. Do you want the TV off? Uh, you just leave it up. I mean, come on. The voices on the TV are easier to sleep with than the ones in here. Is there anything else you need, Chris? Yeah. What is it? Thank you. for helping me with my son. He told me it was you. Thank you. Hi, Mom. Привет. Как дела? Как папа, как бабушка? <laughs> Что? <laughs> как Саша, как Полина. Как ребенок. Все хорошо, нормально все. Я просто переживаю. Я позвонила сказать, что я вас люблю. Я так устала. Я так устала. Я 
просто не знаю, что делать, мам. И я перепробовала все. Он просто не хочет жить больше. Мам, не говори так, пожалуйста, не говори. Осталась неделя. То, что, по крайней мере, доктор говорит. Да я знаю, ты сказала, уходите, если что. Я не могу его оставить. Мамка, ну ты, ну ты, ты чего платишь? Ну не плачь. Все нормально, мам. Окей, все. Я просто, я просто устала. Все хорошо. Не переживай. Я тебя очень сильно люблю. Я очень по тебе скучаю. Хорошо, мам, спасибо. Передай бабу, бабушке и дедушке привет. Хорошо? Хорошо, мам. Хорошо. Ладно, давай. Целую тебя, мам. Угу. Хорошо, пока. They don't even try. It's like they're missing the part that, that makes someone want to do good in the world. The part that makes us more important than everything else. Am I late? Did I miss it? Chris, where were you? Mom and Dad are going to be worried if they know you went to the woods again. It's coming on. Mr. Bob doesn't look happy today, kids. What's wrong, Mr. Bob? My parents are causing me much stress. Let me show you. What's that, Mr. Bob? I'm not sure, kids. Looks like an instrument of some kind. Maybe I will try to play. Are you ready to play the Glasgow Coma Game? What did you say? Are you ready? Opening. No, no response. Verbal. No response. Ah, and the motor skills. There's <laughs> definitely no response there. I can tell you that. <laughs> so what do we got here? One, two, three. Oh, geez, three. Oh, oh congratulations! You win. Oh, though I realize this is a very difficult. Confusing time for you. Wait until you meet our next guest. Our special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand. A big round of applause for Nitya Lodin Harvester. Thank you. Thank you. Even though your Wilson's disease has left you in dire straits, because you are so young, you can still donate your heart, your lungs, your kidneys, and pancreas. But not your liver, because that's fucked. What?
I'm sorry I woke you. The nurse said I could come back here to talk to you about something. I've been in touch with your doctor, and I'm aware of your current prognosis. Your doctor's hospital is part of the NJ Sharing Network, a federally certified, state-approved organ recovery organization. We want to help turn this horrible tragedy into the greatest gift one can give, the gift of life. Sorry, I'm not in my giving mood right now. But sir, I'm sure that yes, you... I'm sure. Believe me, I'm helping by not helping. But Chris... Did I fucking stutter? Just, just get out! I'll just leave my card. Think it over. I do hope you reconsider. Sounds like a plan. I'm going to be leaving soon. I want to see if you needed anything. Lay still. Don't try to sit up. I can do it. With a little help. Here you are. Here I am. You turned great. Really. Uh, you mean... Doing great for a dead man. Thank you. For everything. It's almost five. So it's probably them. Are you ready? Absolutely. I want you to promise me something. I want you to promise me that We'll never turn into that. That we'll always put each other first. No matter how bad things get, promise me. Chris, the visitor's here. Isaac. What's happening, Dad? Well, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sick. My liver is... I know you're just a little sick. You told me you were okay. And now we're rushing to come over and see you. I, I know, you're upset. Are you going to die? Oh, Isaac. Dad. I don't want to lie to you. Yeah. I'm dying. And I'm scared. But... But I don't want you to be. I want you to know how proud of you I am. At home and at school. 
You're capable of changing the world. You are. And if anyone ever tells you any different, then you stay far away from them, okay? You're better than me. You're better than everyone who came before me. I don't hate you. Isaac, can you give me and your father a moment alone? I need to talk to him. <sighs> so? What's new? out of my mind. Oh yeah, like what? What's going on? Are you happy with us? Yeah, I'm happy. Are you? I have a lot of fun with you, Chris. I really do. It's just, you worry me sometimes. <laughs> Isn't that what college is for? We shouldn't be worrying about anything. Is that how you really feel? I'm 20 years old. What should I be worried about? You? I'm sorry, Chris. I just don't want you to end up like your dad. What did you say? I shouldn't have said that. I'm just frustrated when you shut me out like this. I don't want to lose you. Let's just order. You need to eat. Do I? You may think that I'm, you're pushing me past some crisis, or peeling back the layers, trying to fix me. Maybe I'm assuming too much. I'm apathetic, I repress my feelings, and I think my life is a thoughtless accident. Is that covered all? Do I just fucking leave like that? Chris, you just can't walk away every time someone tries to help you. Where are you going? This is why I'm I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, now. Yeah, now. I don't want to talk about it. Every fucking time. Every fucking time you start talking about it. Just leave it alone. You know it's Jimmy that wrecked the fucking thing. And what did I say? Not a fucking word! What do you care? It's not your money. I'm the one that works. I'm the one that puts a fucking roof over those kids' heads. That's all you're good for. I did nothing but sit next to you, quiet, while you went on and on about Marie and fucking what's his name. Why don't you blame it all on them? Fuck off and go to bed. No, I am going to sit out here and listen to this. You can fuck off. You think you're so smart, don't you? Huh? You are just like your mother. You're such a fucking acres and you always will be. Of course, it's all on me. Not you! It's never fucking you. Never fucking you. Get it? 
Hey, you know you're my special guy, right? What, Dad? You're my special guy. There isn't anything that means more to me in the world than what I do for this family. You're my special guy. Thanks, but I don't know. You know. Get some sleep. Okay. You're a gem, Chris. You're a gem. I'm a coward, so much so that I can't even say these words in person. I don't expect you to forgive, to me. forgive me for, for all, all the things, things I have done, done and, the, and pain. the pain I have caused. I did what I thought was best at the time, and it took too many years for me to realize how much hurt I caused you, your mother, and everyone around me. But there is no one to blame but myself. And I want you to know, I'm sorry. Dad, are you all right? <laughs> I am. And, uh... I just want to tell you one more thing. Aren't you finished yet? Hey! Are you finished yet? Excuse me, what? Are you finished? I see you in here almost every night, and I'm in a lot. Sitting in the corner, writing in that book of yours. I was just curious if there's an end to whatever story you're writing. Nah, just... Just words. Do they have any meaning, these words of yours? Well, to me, they do. It's not really for anyone else. Ah. Well, that's a shame. I could give you some good stories. I am a fucking mess, but I embrace it, unlike some people here. You know, I've seen you sit here many nights and talk to no one but the bartender. I don't mean to offend or overanalyze, but is it safe to say you're running away from something? Or do you prefer to be antisocial in the most social of places? I'm just here to get away for a bit. I don't know, I am. Um, I find it easier to tune out people in places like this. You know, their, their voices just become background noise. Like, like putting on a record before you read is just a nice distraction while I sort out my thoughts. And there's something about ink on paper, it's, uh, I don't know, it's just been a long day. Yeah. 
I remember when long days were something I longed for. <laughs> Time does slow down. So now I just press fast forward with a few of these. But hey, I will wake up and try again. Isn't that what we all do? Every day can't be special, right? I like when things don't work out, or they don't go my way. Maybe I'm a bit sadistic in that regard, but I just feel like the more you fix, the more there is to break. And shit does break. Yeah, but what's life without risk? It just seems like it's set up a whole lot of regret down the road if you ask me. I'm just trying to make it through on my own terms. Unless we're given the blueprints, but we still want to build the house. Seldom is the risk better than the reward. Some people, they're just looking for perfection. Me? I just want to stop searching. But for some reason, I can't seem to stay in one place for too long. I avoid looking in the mirror. When I do look, I don't know what I was avoiding in the first place. I think I just have no need to feel... I don't know, um... Comfort? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I don't need to live in some fucking comfort womb. <laughs> Cottoned in and dumbed down. There's nothing wrong with happiness. I have read a lot about it. I just don't believe in settling on something because it's the best pick of circumstantial choices in front of me. So I move on. It's just not for me, I guess. Cheers. To looking in the mirror. Cheers. I'm interrupting you from finishing your story, aren't I? <laughs> Probably hoping the girl that won't shut up will get the idea and leave soon. Uh, no, no, not at all. No, it's Just... all right, I know. I can be a bit much. Chris, you got a cab out back. It's just I need to head home. Yeah, well, it was nice chatting. I hope you have a good evening. Thanks, good to see you. One more, Lucia. One long fucking day. I'm sitting underneath your stairs. For the girls to go Waiting just to be alone Got cinnamon in my nose Holes through all my clothes Praying myself to sleep Listen to the TV screen Roll myself a cigarette Remembering how to forget A time when our arms were tan Beaches with the widest sand Fire and a place to sleep Warmth between two sheets Windows in the highest roof Pointing at the big bad truth Give me just a word in the wind I can turn it into anything Just a little riff to start the dream You can love them if you want You can tie your feelings into knots You're so much more beautiful to me my neck, my hand upon your breast, the day after the day after the next, the future and the present sex, listen to the grasses sing.
such a wicked thing The way that it makes us smart Breaking all of us hearts Give me just a little light Rock me till snow at night Cook me with your morning eggs Walk me with your breakfast legs Give me just a word to me.